something a little different today, at least different for me. I don't normally stand here behind a desk and talk to you like a talking head, but I've been kind of putting together this, this project and I thought maybe it was worth given Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Christmas shopping season, maybe it would be helpful for you. Kind of share this with you, something you might want to do. And that is I'm putting together or put together a uh, emergency bag for my kids to keep in their cars. So basic stuff, un kind of a, kind of a, I say emergency, more like unexpected. Something just happened, you're on the side of the road, you gotta get off the side of the road, get to work, get to school, or get back home, something like that. Just some basics to help out in those kind of unexpected and maybe typical, likely, the most likely unexpected scenarios. That sounds weird, likely unexpected. Gonna kinda walk through what we got in the bag, what, uh, what products I chose, why I chose them, and um, then maybe it can help you either replicate this or maybe just give you some ideas for something you might wanna do but I wanted to have something that my kids could keep in their cars so they don't have to necessarily get help from a stranger, so they, but they certainly can. They don't necessarily have to call me to come get them, but of course they certainly can. And maybe even extend that, they can be the one to help somebody else. So, let's dive into the bag. Before we dive in, real quick, a couple of explanations maybe or disclaimers before we get into this. Like I said, this is not a full on like stuff is at the fan kind of emergency bag. Like I said, kind of the likely things that might happen, but the when I say unexpected, the, the kind of ill-timed. It's always at the worst possible time, you know? Also, it's not a complete tool bag. We're not wrenching on the car. This is just get out of the situation you're in and get to a safe place, get it here, get it home, get it to a friend or whatever where you can then deal with the real problem at hand. This is just kind of band-aid type stuff to get to where you gotta go. I'm not suggesting this is like the right formula, the right bag for you. Everybody's different, everybody has different scenarios. How far you drive, where you drive, how remote are you? What kind of other services are at your disposal? Do you drive at night a lot? Do you drive in cold weather? We live down south now, so we don't have to deal with winter anymore. But that would be different if we had to drive in the snow and ice, we'd have a different kind of bag in different kind of seasons. So keep that in mind and plan for the kinds of things that you have to do or that your loved one has to do. For me, this is a bag I put together, the kind of planning, kind of reacting to scenarios that have already occurred since they've been driving. And some of them are just general best practice that I, that I think in that case, I do think would be universally relevant to Everyone. I, I, I did try to balance budget with, with um, reliability. Not the highest end of everything. It's not the best version of it. There's, everybody's gonna come on and go, don't, don't buy that one, buy this one, that one's better. Probably, that's probably true. I'm not, I'm not claiming this is the best stuff, but it's also not the worst stuff. This isn't just like cheap out, get junk. This, this is gonna fail you. If you're relying on this stuff, you're on the side of the road and you want the, this stuff to get you, to help you out, you need it to work. Right? You need it, it, you can't have it not work for you. That you, it defeats the purpose. It doesn't, then it doesn't matter what value you got. It doesn't matter what, you, what deal you got and how cheap it was. If it doesn't work for you, it's useless. It's just a waste of money. So, need it to be reliable. Need it to actually work when you, when you want to count on it. But I also don't want to spend a whole bunch of stuff on boutique, bespoke type stuff that they're just going to lose, honestly. They're kids. I know, I know, they're adults. But I'm dad, so they're kids. But also, they just sort of come by this honestly. If you've paid attention in any of my videos where I'm running around the shop and how messy it is in the background, it's uh, it's because I don't put stuff away when I should, and then I can't find it later. So knowing I do that, and they're my kids, you know, didn't want to overspend on stuff that they might just lose anyway, and we'll have to replace. So that's our balance. I'll put links to everything down here uh, that I have. I will say this, some of the stuff I have, I didn't buy from the link I'm going to give you. I just acquired it over the years and I just have extras. So I just gave them the extras or somebody gave them to me or um, in one case, stuff you just kind of get in life and we have a bunch of it laying around. So let's, let's put it to good use. Okay, so let's get started. This is in no particular order other than when I stuffed everything in here. So I'm gonna pull it out kind of in that order uh, it probably could stand to be a little better organized, but you don't certainly shouldn't watch me for organizational tips. I'll start first with the bag itself. This is a uh, 16 inch 
uh, bag from was it Work Pro. Just a bag. Uh, I had I started this process with a much smaller bag. I wanted to keep the bag fairly small because they don't have big cars. They don't drive big SUVs or pickup trucks, and so it's just going to take up space. And the, le the less space it can take up, the better. Again, balance. Keep keep it in a compact space, but make sure you have enough in you know enough space in the bag for the things you want. And that bag was too small. So I ended up upgrading this to a slightly bigger bag, and it's so far so good, uh, but it's pretty full. And I could see this probably, if I get too much more stuff in here, we're gonna have to grow the bag as well. So we'll start working our way around the outside of the bag. First is the tire pressure gauge. This is a digital one, it's super cheap. It's not, you know, it's not, it, it looks fancy. It's not, uh, it's, a, it's backlit, which I like. I don't know why they light up this because it doesn't really provide any light at all. Maybe it's just for looks. Um, I don't remember where I got this. This is from a company called Geartronics. And I don't remember when or where I got this one. I think it was at a car show as swag or maybe in a, like a gift box or something. I know some people say like, just throw an old school tire pressure gauge in. Everybody should have one in their glove box. And that's, I would agree with that. Uh, they're super cheap. Like they're two or three bucks at your local store, Amazon, whatever. And throw it in your glove box and you always have one. And that's true. But sometimes they can be hard to read, especially in the dark like on the side of the road or in a gas station where you're trying to fill up your tire or whatever. So uh, having a, a digital one can be nice, especially a backlit one. In this pocket here, I've got a multi-tool. I'm a Leatherman guy. I have several. I like them a lot. I use them a lot. It's, it's so much functionality. Grandpa or great grandpa, they, they would have like Swiss army knife, you know, like the do everything kind of knife. And I just thought that was super cool. I picked up this one recently. It's not a Leatherman. It's from a company called Flissa. And it's a Leatherman clone. I think it's a clone of the, is it the Wave? I don't remember, but it's a Leatherman clone. And uh, it's really good and it's like half the price. It's got your regular pliers. Um, they're not spring loaded. So you don't, you have to open them and close them. That pros and cons there. What I do like about this one is it has removable blades for the wire cutters and you can replace the blades on it. Handy because I've done that before where I cut wire that was just a little, or tried to cut wire, I should say. It was just a little too thick and it damaged the blade, cut the, the wire cutter, and the wire cutters never really worked uh, properly again. So uh, that's kind of nice. It comes in sort of kind of neat colors. This is their, um, like their tan, sort of the tactical colors. They have a green one. Got all your usual stuff. Outside accessible knife and a uh, serrated knife. It's got a saw blade on one side, which does work. Actually, I had to mount a trail camera at my daughter's place and we mounted it on a tree and cut some branches off. It worked great. And then a file, fine edge file on one side, coarse on the other. And then it's got all the tools on the inside that you would typically expect from a Leatherman. Um, I'm not gonna go through everything. One thing I like about this particular one is it comes with a bit holder and a bit. So, it will, it has a flathead and a Phillips head. Mostly when I use, you know, when I've had keep one in the car, what I use it for is the pliers and cutting open a package. You know, I don't want to spend 70, 80 or hundred dollars on a really nice Leatherman that they're going to probably beat up because that's what I do. Okay. Let's see. You can see these sticking out zip ties. You know, we always say if it, if it don't, move and it should WD-40 it. If it moves and it shouldn't duct tape it, zip tie it. I, I can't tell you how many times I've zip tied something on the side of the road. Uh, actually, my daughter got in a minor fender bender not that long ago and we basically put all of her front end of her car back on. The, we took the bumper front fascia off and broke it. And we basically put it all together in a parking, parking space on the side of the road with zip ties. So yeah, just a bundle of zip ties, a couple different sizes. The short ones, just because they fit, I can put them on the outside there. Again, the inside, I got some longer ones as well. They just don't fit in the side of the bag very good without flopping around. Rubber bands break, they dry out, they, they you know, to bundle these together. So I just bundle them together with another zip tie. And it's kind of nice, because then when you pull one out, Obviously the bundle gets a little smaller and then you just cinch that zip tie up a little bit tighter and it holds them and it holds them pretty good. But it also, they can slide in and out really easy. Just slide it out and nothing, doesn't catch on the rubber band, it doesn't do all that kind of stuff. Just a few zip ties, nothing too crazy there. Uh, what else we got back here? 
Sharpie, pen, pencil, Sharpie, all the above. Right, this just has a Sharpie in it. Um, both of them have like pens and pencils in like their consoles and console of their vehicles. But you know, you never know. Nice thing about the Sharpies are the right on just about anything. Uh, so just always keep one in the car. So this is a cheap little uh, OBD2 reader that, um, this is the one, that I did a video on this particular one, this is the AD20. Small enough and cheap enough that I just tossed them in the bag. If the kids ever needed one, they could, they could use it and they could sync with their phone and read a code if they had to, uh, and, uh, or help somebody else if they need to. Super handy, can save you a ton. You know, not really like necessarily emergency level stuff, but continuing here, flashlight. This is a uh, flashlight from Haltech, Halt, Haltmech, Halt, Haltmech, Haltmech. I don't know. I don't know who the brand is. I can't see it or pronounce it. Doesn't matter. This is nice. It's a nice bright um, light. It's, I think it's 1200 lumens. You can uh, go to a super bright and then you can go real dim. It has a setting memory on it. So when you push the button on and off, it just turns it to the setting you had it. And I like this dial because two reasons. One, it's magnetic, so it'll, you can stick it up on the, underneath, underneath your hood or on top of something and uh, hands-free. It's got a clip on it that you can clip on your hat if you need to for, for a bit of a headlamp, for a more focused light. And it also, the end rotates to become more of a lantern style. And that's also really handy when you want to stick it down and be able to shine light on something and you can have it kind of at whatever angle you need it to get to direct the light where you want. This isn't a terribly fancy one. There are fancier versions of this. I, I, I'm also a flashlight guy. I love, I love nerding out on flashlights. But um, this is relatively inexpensive and uh, compact. Again, trying to keep the size small. It won't, it won't be the brightest flashlight in the world. Uh, it won't be necessarily the sturdiest flashlight in the world. But... It will work in a pinch. It tends to be whenever you're stuck on the side of the road for something, you're on your way to somewhere, right? Sometimes you're on your way home. Sometimes you're on your way to work or school. And uh, you got to, you know, hack something together on the side of the road and get and then finish your drive to work. But now you've been working on your car and your hands are dirty. So I threw in some wipes. This is a, uh, like this is, I think we got this, some of these, a bunch of these wipes, these sanitizing wipes back in, you know, Rona period where Everything had to be wiped down, or at least we thought it did. <laughs> and uh, so, but you get wet wipes from the barbecue joint or whatever. Like you, sometimes you get them at church, at the nursery. Like you just, you just, I always accumulate these wipes, and so we just hold on to them. My wife keeps some in her purse. She keeps some in the in the console of her her truck, and I threw some in this bag. You get on the side of the road, and you're mucking around with your car, and now your hands are dirty. So something you can wipe your hands off. So you're not bringing that dirt into your car or on your dress clothes or whatever it else. There is a, I'll put a link down to this too. I have had these before and I like them. In this case, it was just to keep it small. So I just grabbed a few of these and tossed them in there. Uh, is a, there's a pouch of these, you can get a small pouch of hand cleaning wipes. They're really great. They got kind of a rough side on one side for scrubbing and then a smooth side on the other side. And they're awesome. They get almost anything off your hands. I have a huge pouch of them that I keep here in the shop. It's too big to put in this bag. So I threw these uh, threw these in instead and it works fine let's move inside sometimes the flashlight the flashlight's nice sometimes it's hard to hold on to and so i also threw in a head, one of these headlamps in particular this style where it has just the embedded leds in a, in a strip because it's super flexible you can just roll it up and tuck it in um, these are again really cheap i think this was two for 25 bucks or something so two different functions it's got the light bar different levels and then you've got the spotlight and then it's also got a hand motion. So you can wipe your hand back and forth and it turns on and off. Well, all this stuff, by the way, I'm, I'm more of a fan of rechargeables than battery driven. Most of the stuff that's, that's rechargeable, when it's not being used, the batteries drain very, very slowly. And so, but you do have to remember to charge it. That's the downside, of course. Something that just takes batteries, if you've got the batteries and you've, you, know, you always have fresh batteries, just throw fresh batteries in and you're good. I just like to have rechargeable stuff. You may decide that you would rather do um, battery powered versus, you know, like AA, AAA powered stuff instead of rechargeable stuff. I like the rechargeable stuff mostly because um, it's smaller. 
most of the stuff is real compact. It'd be a lot, it gets a little bulkier if it's got to have a battery compartment in it versus one of these sort of soldered on modern lithium batteries. The kids don't go that, again, they don't go that far away. They don't go that remote. They generally have various cords on them. You know, we live in a digital age and so they're always got some charging cord or something. So what I have tried to do is keep all of the things that do need to be charged using the same kind of charger. So all like modern type C chargers. So that way if you have, you only really need one cord and it can pretty much do all of, the, all of these devices. A little uh, kneeling pad. You can get different sizes. Again, trying to keep this small. Uh, I think I'm gonna probably, because the bag's getting a little bulky, get a little carabiner and hook it up to the one of the loops on the side and keep it outside the bag. A couple of these things in here are like that, that it might be you, you could store with the bag, but not in the bag and, keep, and still keep it all together. But this is just a, you know, soft kneeling pad. Again, you're, you're in some dress clothes. You gotta kneel on the ground to, to look at something, inspect something under your car and you don't want to kneel in the dirt or the gravel or even the concrete. Um, just put something you can kneel down on. I've, I've done enough where I have put rocks into my kneecaps. One thing I think is important everybody should carry for like, whether, whether you do one of these bags or not is a first aid kit. I have one for here in the shop. We have one in the house. We keep one in the cars. Uh, just basic stuff. This, this is not like, this is not the kind of first aid full med, full med kit, right? I'm not saving anybody's life with this first aid kit. Band-aids, wipes, gauze, right? This is a little bit bigger one. Uh, again, I think I got it for free at one of these local fire department um, expo kind of things. And uh, this one's a little bulkier because it's got a couple of ice packs in it. A couple of smallish hand tools. Again, I'm not, this is not like repair your car, fixing, you know, transmission problems on the side of the road here. But I do have some extras, so I put some in here. Small, small like quarter inch ratchet and some small selection of sockets. Uh, this was a set, so it, it is what it is with what's on there, but generally you only need a few. If you, if you don't, need to put, don't have a whole set you wanna to put together, like I could probably take a bunch of these out and mix and match and just have one rail with the sockets you're most likely to use. So things like, you know, make a 10 millimeter um, what is eight millimeter, eight or nine millimeter is usually the battery terminal. The, the side terminals I think are usually eight millimeter. The top ones are usually 12 and, uh, interior stuff, those little interior screws, like seven millimeters. So that, you know, the, the small basic sockets you might need in your car, not a full set, not a robust set. Same thing with, with a screwdriver. So you can keep a bunch of different screwdrivers. I have, I may have so many screwdrivers. Just over the years, they just sort of accumulate. So Phillips and Flathead screwdrivers. But what I put in theirs is one of these, um, just a bit driver with a pack of bits. This is a bit over packed. I probably don't need all of these. Like this has got a hex head, like Allen head. Um, it's got a bunch of different Phillips head. It's got like three number two Phillips head. We could trim this down and make this a little smaller and uh, have just like the necessary ones, but this was sort of a handy set. Again, this came with another uh, screwdriver kit that I bought. It's like a full set of screwdrivers and I already have a ton of these various bits in a Milwaukee box. So I threw this in this bag because this was extra. This, this is the case with a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff, like I said, this is some of the stuff is stuff that I bought for this kit. Some of this stuff is items I've had laying around and I just had, I had extras. I'll put the link down for something comparable. If you don't have it already, you can, you can get something. It won't be the exact one that necessarily that I showed you, but you'll get the idea. It's kind of the same. Uh, again, kind of along with the lines of the Leatherman, you got a pair of pliers, but you know, they're just sort of decent pliers. They're not great pliers. So a, a nice, small, adjustable pliers. You never know when you need something like this and uh, they keep it small, you know, Knipex makes a nice one, but they're super expensive. I, I like them. Um, they're maybe the best pliers made. I'm not putting in my kid's tool bag. These are relatively cheap. These are, these are from Irwin, the vice grip brand and uh, just a small, you know, adjustable angle head, uh, like channel lock style pliers. And it's just, it, I like it cause if it's really small and it fits nicely inside this little bag, and stays out of out of the way. Going along the stuck on the side of the road in the rain, 
just some ponchos, just some disposable ponchos. They're nice, they're small, they're compact, uh, they fit easily in almost anything, and it keep you dry. We got a lot of rain here. Having just something, extra rain gear, you forgot your jacket, whatever, something you can grab if you need to. Hand protection, so gloves. You know, that's kind of stuff, that, you know, oftentimes you want gloves. I like these high visibility gloves. These are a little loud and obnoxious, and that's the point. Again, out in the dark. So you want something that's gonna protect your hand, but also something that's gonna be some high visibility. Uh, these are not reflective, and I thought about getting reflective ones. They're a little pricier, and I was trying to keep the price down, but that might be an option to get something that's, that's uh, you know, gonna show up at night. Oh, little bungees. Kind of like the same concept as the duct tape and the zip ties. I don't carry a whole set of bungee cords, but sometimes you just need small ones. These are nice, they're just a, sort of a loop them over top. The ball keeps them from coming apart. Um, I've used these a, at odd times for odd things a bunch of times, so they're real handy. The last few things here are, are the bulkiest, other than maybe the first aid kit, and certainly the most expensive items in this, that I did spend a little money on for them. This is a um, battery-powered inflator, and it comes with this little pouch, which is nice, and here's the hose. Screw the hose on the top. Uh, it also comes with a bunch of Obviously a charging cord, a bunch of tips for pumping up like a ball or a raft or whatever. It's easy, you turn it on, you set to 36 pounds, you hit go, and it goes. Uh, and you can change how you set it up. So is it in whatever units of measurement you want? This is in PSI. It has different presets. So it can do motorcycle, car, motorcycle, bike, uh, a ball, and it has a little flashlight on it. Not the brightest flashlight in the world. I've used these a bunch. Our Yukon had a slight leak. Remember I did a video a while back with, with patching that tire? That During that period, that tire had a very, very slow leak. And so over every couple weeks or so, you'd lose some air, and so you just top it off. The last thing in this kit is a jump pack. So this is from AC mount, AC mount. I don't know. So these are just, they're basically just a really big battery pack, like you think like you might use to charge your phone with. And you can, by the way, charge your phone with these. It comes in a super cool pouch, also rechargeable via USB-C. And you, come on, give me this. So the way these work is you have your plug here. You hook it onto your battery terminals and turn it on. And this basically is like a jump starter. When you jump start a car, you're just using somebody else's battery basically to supplement your battery with cables. Cables are bulky, sometimes you don't have another car. This is, these battery packs basically function the same way. Now obviously they're not as big as a full car battery and there's a limit to how much these will do as far as the size of the vehicle that it'll, that it'll you know, how much cranking amps you need. They work pretty good. I've used them, I, I have another one that I've used as an older one that I've used a ton. Here in the shop even, right? Trying to get, the truck's been sitting for a while and the battery went dead and so just throw a jump pack on it and fire it up. Real compact, it's a nice little case. This one has a couple different features on it. Has, like the other, has a light. Uh, it has USB ports, so the USB Type-C charging port, but also has regular USB ports to charge other devices. So you can use it as a battery pack and you can use it if you have to recharge any of these other things. This is a long battery and it lasts forever if you're not using it. In fact, this one is at 100% still and it's been sitting here for probably two weeks. So you could keep it, if you don't have to use it, it'll stay charged for like almost forever. Um, and you can use it to charge your other devices that don't. That's the bag. I'm looking at this and I'm like, all those fit in that bag? How did I get all this in there? I mean, I might need to upgrade the bag here pretty soon because uh, I can already think of some other things that I think I'd like to have in here. And obviously you don't have to do what I did. Do what works for your situation, but maybe just give you some ideas of something you might want to do. And speaking of, I'm curious what your ideas were for what I didn't put in this bag or variants of what I have in this bag. I always like to learn from other people that do this sort of thing. So if you've got some suggestions or other things that you think should be in this bag, let us know. Put it in the comments. We'd all like to know about it and learn from you. So we'd appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you next time.